Hello everybody, Chris here. In this video, I want to show all of you how to control your volume for music and other audio inside of DaVinci Resolve 17. So we're going to be covering how to raise and lower your volume, how to mute a single clip or a entire audio track, how to fade in and out of your music or other audio clips, and how to crossfade between audio clips. And we'll be covering this both from an individual clip and an entire audio track perspective as well. So in this example that I've gone ahead and set up, you can see that I have a music track and audio track one here. And then I recorded some audio using the Fairlight tab for audio track two. So that is the voice narration. Now by clicking and dragging down on these audio tracks, you can see that the audio waveform is gonna get a little bit bigger, so it's easier to see. And you can see clearly that the audio waveform for the music is louder than the captured audio as well. So that's a good indication of which audio track is gonna be the loudest. But let's go ahead and play this little clip I have. This is part one of the audio recording. We're looking at a video of some smoke. So you can see it's a little hard to hear the captured audio because the music is just really overshadowing it. So to raise or lower the volume on a single audio clip, you can left click on that clip, which will give you an orange border around it. And then if you go to the inspector in the top right, open it if you don't see it there, then you can lower and raise the volume with this volume setting. So if I want to lower the volume, I can bring this down in terms of decibels. So something like negative 10 is actually a huge difference in terms of volume. And likewise, if you added plus 10, it would be quite similar as well. So let's go ahead and play it now. This is part one of the audio recording. We're looking at a video of some smoke. And so you can see that it is a lot more balanced now. So on the flip side, if you want to make a audio clip a little louder, let's try clicking on this capture clip down here. And I'll just go ahead and raise the audio. So notice that when I do this, it only affects what's in this orange box. The second recorded clip over here, the audio waveforms don't get any bigger. So when you're raising and lowering your audio in this way, you have to do it for every single clip. So let's compare the audio from here to the audio over here real quick. And we want to raise or lower the volume. Okay, so that was the first one. And now this is a second recording for the same video clip. So obviously this was recorded with the same microphone and the same settings, but you can see the audio difference. So let's reset the volume on this recorded clip to its original by clicking on this little loopback symbol. So it's now set to zero. So if you want to raise the volume on an entire track, which is really handy in cases like this, where you're gonna have many recordings and you don't wanna adjust the settings every single time, then you can use the mixer over here on the right. So audio track two is my voiceover track. So if I wanna raise all of the volume up, I just take this little slider here and I move this upwards. So you can see the amount of gain we're adding to the volume or the increase in the volume over here with this plus 4.1 decibels plus five decibels. Now this doesn't change the audio waveform, but it will change the final audio output for that track. So if I go back to the start here and I hit play, you should be able to see that the audio is still louder than it was originally. This is part one of the audio recording. We're looking at a video of some smoke. So another situation you might run into is that you want to raise or lower the volume inside of a clip, but not at the edges, but rather 10, 15 seconds after the start. So let's just say for this little period here of this music track, I wanted to make it quiet, but I don't want to affect the rest of the track. So if you left click on your audio track, you'll notice in the inspector, there are these keyframing diamonds. By default, they're gray. So if you click on one at the moment that you want to start fading out or in the audio to a different audio level, then that's gonna create a keyframing point. And you may also notice for each of the clips, there are these volume lines. So when you only have one or no keyframes, you, you can raise or lower this to raise the volume on the entire video clip. So that will do the same thing as changing the volume up here. I'm gonna hit Control or Command Z to undo that. Uh, but as soon as you add a second keyframe point, then the volume is going to increase or decrease between the values at those two points. So if I go, let's say half a second in front of this keyframe point, and I set a new keyframe up here, which you can do by clicking on the keyframe diamond again, or if you already have one keyframe and you set the value again at any other point, a new keyframe will be created automatically. So if I take the volume here and I decrease it, you can see that keyframe diamond immediately turns red, the keyframe is created automatically. So if I put it at negative 9.6, now the volume at this point is negative 9.6, and I can click on the left arrow of the keyframe, to go to the first keyframe and you can see it's zero there. So because these are the only two keyframes, anything before this keyframe is gonna be at zero 
decibels compared to the base clip. And then anything before the first keyframe is also going to have the first keyframes value of zero, meaning just the original volume of the audio clip. And anything that comes after the second keyframe point is going to have that negative 9.6. So we take the volume and we fade it out negative 9.6 decibels to end up with a lower volume. So you can see everything that comes before is louder and everything that comes before is it is is quieter. So let's go ahead and hit play and just see how that would sound. Okay, so hopefully it should be pretty obvious. The music is quieter on the right side. Of course, you can also fade the music out while it's playing not in this gap period here. So if I actually pull this over here, so I'm just taking that keyframe on this little graph and changing the timing, then uh, you'll see that it will actually fade out as it plays. Okay. And so likewise, if I want to fade the audio back in, let's go over here, I'll create another keyframe. So if I want it to be the same value as this one, it's probably better to just click on the keyframe diamond and create another one here with the same value as the second keyframe, then go, uh, I don't know, let's say to about here. And let's bring the volume back to the original amount. So if you need precise values, rather than dragging the slider like this, it's probably better to just type in the value of zero. So now only in this small period here is the audio actually quieter. So we can play the whole thing now. And that's how you can control the volume levels inside of an audio clip, especially for music, which often would go on for minutes at a time if you need it to be quieter or louder at any particular moment. So say possibly while you're editing, but maybe even in the final output, you want to mute the music. One reason might be that you just want to listen back to your recorded audio and just hear if there's any problems with it more clearly without the music. Another might be you want to export a few video where you don't actually include the music. So it would be a no background music version. So either way you want to do it, you can right click on a clip and then you can disable it if you want to mute it completely for the audio. So I'll uncheck enable clip and now it's grayed out. That's effectively muting this audio. Now, sometimes your audio would be linked to the video as well if the audio is from the recorded video file. So if you want to mute the audio without muting your original video clip, then before you select here, what you would do is you would uncheck linked selection. That way you would only be selecting the audio track component of your recorded video file, and then you would be muting that individually. If you do have linked selection enabled, then when you right click on your clip and you disable it, it would also disable the video track. So just be aware of that. In this case, the music is brought in as an extra, so it wasn't linked to begin with. So that would be how you would mute one audio track. So we can right click and then re-enable it if we want to bring it back. But if you want to mute your entire audio track, then you would click this M symbol that you see over under audio one. So this mutes it. And this will mute everything that's in that track, whether it's music or not, any audio that is playing in audio track one would just not be heard. So if I go here and I hit play, this is part one of the audio recording, then you can only hear the audio track two because audio track one is muted. Now note, if we go over to the deliver tab and we're ready to export our video, you can see that audio track is still muted. So if you want to include this audio track in the final export, then you need to make sure on one of the other tabs that you do uncheck the mute track button or the audio will be muted in the final export. So now let's talk about how to fade in a audio clip. So if you left click on a clip, then you're gonna see in the top left corner or the top right corner that there are these little white notches. Let me go ahead and zoom in so that it is a little bit more apparent what we're talking about here. So we have the white notch. And if we leave this on the left side, then it's not going to do anything. But if we left click on it, and we hold and bring it over, this is going to cause a fade in of the music of the duration, which you can see there. So in this case, the colon 05 is in terms of frames. So that depends on how many frames per second your timeline is playing at. To know roughly what that would convert to in terms of seconds, let's go up to the file menu, project settings, and we can see this is 29.97 frames per second or effectively 30 frames per second. So five frames out of 30 frames is going to be roughly a sixth of a second, or I think that would come out to about 0.17 seconds. So a more obvious number would be 15 frames, which would be half a second, of course, half of 30. So now if I have this pulled out, you can see the little fade in. If I go to the start here and I hit space, this is part one. You can hear that the music takes a second to fade in. Uh, sometimes you would want that. 
if I want a longer fade in duration, I just pull this out further. So if I take this all the way out to one second and zero frames, it's going to take twice as long for the fade in. This is part one of the audio. Okay, so likewise, if we go to the end of a clip, like over here, and let's say we want to cut it out a little bit before this natural fade out of the music track, I'm going to hit A to go to selection mode, and I'm just going to pull this music track to right about there. So let's just pretend this is where our video was meant to end. So we need the music to fade out early. Um, if I play it from here to the end, it'll just end abruptly. So if we want that to be more natural, let's create a fade out. Same idea with the white notch. I left click on it and I pull it out as long as I want the duration to be. Let's make it one second. Go here and hit space. And that is a just much better way to end the music track. So now that brings us to the idea of a crossfade. So let's say that when we're right about here and we're cutting between clips that we actually want to change the music track as well. So I'll go ahead and hit space between one audio and the other. And now we're looking at, so we want to bring in another music track there. So I'll leave snapping enabled and I'll just pull the music track to be right here at the cut. So let's grab Scheming Weasel and put it right here. Okay, and then I go over here and I'll hit play. The music track is gonna end abruptly, of course. So let's hit space, the other. And now we're looking, so very unnatural transition. So if you want to crossfade so that one music track naturally kind of fades into the second track, then what you can do is uh, right click on the border between the two music tracks and then add a six frame, 14 frame, 30 frame or 60 frame crossfade. So once again, uh, this is measured in frames, but you can convert it into seconds by knowing your frames per second. So 30 frames in a 30 frame per second video is going to be a one second transition. So let's try that. Okay. And uh, if you have the redness on the sides, you may need to cut the music track a little bit in order for this to work. So let's just go ahead and trim the clips for now. Okay. And now it's going to add our crossfade between the two music tracks. So if I go here and I hit play one audio and the other, and now we're looking at, you'll see that what happens is that one fades out while the other fades in, and it just makes the transition more natural. So let's go ahead and hit play again. And now we're looking at a clip. So I think one final thing I do want to point out here is raising the volume of your entire project. So if you see in the mixer, this area bus one, all of your audio tracks are going to, in the end, be output by bus one. You could think of it as your final audio output. So after doing all the edits for your individual tracks, if you decide that you want the overall project to be louder or quieter, you can use bus one to control that. So let's just make everything a little bit louder. Let's just say three decibels. And now if I go over here and we hit play, you'll just, and let's actually make it plus five decibels so that it's more obvious, but I'll go ahead and hit play and you'll be able to see that the overall project is louder, both the top track and the bottom track. Between one audio and the other. And now we're looking at a, and uh, just to show the reverse, I'll go to negative five on this final bus output. And then let's hit play. A transition between one audio and the other. And now we're looking at a, okay, so hopefully that's pretty obvious. Now, just as a little bonus, if you don't already know, if you go to the Fairlight tab, you'll notice that there are actually these effects buttons for individual audio tracks. So if you want to apply an audio effect to not a single clip, but an entire audio track, you can use these to do so. So I won't really get into how these specifically work in this video, but if you want it to apply to a single clip, you would apply the effect to a single audio clip, or if you want to apply it to an entire audio track, which might have multiple music tracks or multiple audio recordings, then you would just click here and find the effect you want. So uh, that's pretty much gonna be it for this video in controlling audio inside of DaVinci Resolve 17. Thank you very much for watching to the end. I've been Chris, I hope you found this video useful and I will see all of you in my future video content.